It's good coffee. It is. Thank you, Patrick. Good morning, folks. This is Slappercast episode number 64. And uh, we got lots of topics to, to roll through today. First off, you, you mentioned a Three Dog Night story a couple weeks ago that oh, we yeah. has something to do with somebody we know, right? Somebody we all know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to totally fuck it up, but I can, I, can, I can tell you about it. Let's hear it. All right. We all know Jim Henkel, guitar player, yes, keyboard well. player, singer for Beatle, Alan, all these band, El Orbitz. Molly and the Whips, if you want to go way, way, way back yeah. in, uh, in, in, into ancient times. An all-around nice guy. All-around great guy. Not going to meet a nicer. Um, very much a, uh, an avid comic book collector, an avid uh, JFK um, conspiracy theorist, and uh, we've, we've spent many miles talking about that. Anyway, I can't remember who came up with this idea. It was either Alan Hill or Jim Henkel that basically... There's a period in the history of Three Dog Night, kind of maybe in the early, mid-80s, where they, I think Michael McDonald had left the band. I mean, he came in and did that minute-by-minute minute record and completely changed the way Three Dog Night sounded. I'm not a huge fan of Three Dog Night. Good. That makes Wait, not three, three Dog Night. That makes three of us. No, yeah. no, no, it is Three Dog Night. Yeah, no, sorry. Wrong man, wrong man. He was in, he was in the Doobie Brothers. Um. See, Was you it, could have completely got that see, past me. I call, I, I, yeah, it, it, it's all it's all messed up now. I've already I've already I've already screwed the pooch on this story. <laughs> the basic premise is that we were going to start. They were going to start a rumor that Jim was the guitar player in Three Dog Night. In this weird, I think it was Three Dog Night or or Doobie Rose. Now I'm all confused now. <laughs> but basically Damn it, Eric. they were going to tell the story they were going to tell the story that Jim was going to be a, was a member of of that band between that time where they weren't releasing any albums he was only playing live and how could you refute it how could exactly. you how, <laughs> how could you yeah. how could you say that's it's not like, true it's yeah. like a blind spot in history for a blind spot in yeah. music history of yeah. like maybe like 84 to 86 or something like that and Jim was a member of was a, a touring member of uh, of uh, yeah, either Three Dog Night or the Doobie <laughs> Brothers, I can't remember which. <laughs> and we started to spread it around. We started to tell people just as a goof, just to be goofy yeah. about it. And we're not we're not really lying. We're not really pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. But I remember Alan being so tickled when he told me the story. He just laughed all the way through the whole story. So <laughs> so Jim Henkel, who we know and love, was a member of either the Doobie Brothers or Three Dog Night. It's probably Which is basically the just, same band. Yeah, you, you, yeah, same you pick. Band. It's basically the same band. <laughs> yeah, because both of them, if, if 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 both bands had ceased to, you know, or had, had never existed, rock and roll would probably be better off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely in, in that weird nebulous of, you know, the 70s are over, the 80s are just starting, here comes New Wave, hair metal picks up, there's no place for Doobie Brothers. No. There's no place no. for Three Dog Night. Not no. until the later mid '80s, when the older people from the '70s feel nostalgic. Classic rock radio is born, and the rest is history. And Jim Henkel was part of that history. Excellent. That's well, he should be. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. That's not I mean, we can't we can't not prove it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't not prove it. Can't not, right. you, you cannot not prove it. Yeah. That he wasn't a member of that those either of those bands. Anyway, that's the uh, <laughs> the Jim Henkel story. Yeah, wackiness. Um, Dalton Flint, old friend of ours from College Station. Yes, hello, Dalton. Uh, one of, he's Dalton is the is a shining example of of an Aggie uh, fan or something. You know, an Aggie that we met while many years that we played at O'Bannon's Tap House and College Station. And the Aggie, Aggies proliferate throughout the world. We run into them everywhere. And Dalton has stayed in touch with us this whole time. I, mean, I forget where he's living now. Uh, not you. I mean, he's in Texas somewhere. I forget where. Anyway, what? he stayed in touch. He stayed in touch with us this whole time. <laughs> yeah. No idea where he is right now. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Dalton, if you're there, please reach out. Let but us I, know where you are. Yeah. I mean, I know. I mean, tell I, us you're safe. I hear from him on <laughs> social mask. media pretty regularly. But anyway, Dalton asks, "What's y'all's favorite coffee to drink at home? Whole bean or ground?" Uh, working from home, I find myself experimenting with several different brands and roasts. I'd love to know what, what blaggers drink. So, what are we drinking today, Patrick? So, yeah, so this is from our friend Kay up in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. She had sent us some uh, uh, Kaladi Brothers uh, roasts. So what we did today was we had a, we had a, 
uh, some stovetop, you know, the, the, the metal. We had some of that. Uh, so I, 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 like to, I do like to grind the beans. I like to do all that stuff. However, uh, in recent months, just for, for, uh, for speed uh, in every, every aspect of speed that I can, you know, I've, I've been um, getting the ground stuff, but she sent us two pounds of the, the whole bean stuff, and it's just been, you can taste it yourself. It's, just, it's, it's phenomenal. So we're, 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 we're thanking Kay today for that. And yeah, usually um, yeah, I, I, I drink probably, you know, a little bit of coffee every day and it was so, so funny um and the the you know you you, you just can't you know I, i've said it before i said it a keurig is not coffee and uh you know an instant coffee you know i, I understand the necessity but still that's not so uh, i i've been i've been drinking decent coffee for the last few years and yeah it's just uh it's it's pushed my heroin use way, way down. It's, you know, I've stopped, you know, killing homeless people on the weekends for fun. And, you know, <laughs> no, just kidding. But, it, it, the, yeah. Not for fun anymore. Now it's just more like now, work. Yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah I dig it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah, this, I have to say this, this coffee she sent is tremendous. So thank you very much, Kay. Yeah. So when you're not brewing stuff like this, though, your regular, your, your go-to brand yeah, I like really dark coffee. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Seattle's best number five has been the that's been the one for. I I, I experimented forever. I I you know, get different brand beans and you know mix them and and uh, uh, way way back in the day, you could it seemed like you could get the same result from the same beans. And over time, it just seemed like the 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 the, the roasting changed. Mm. So the flavor was, it wouldn't be as bold because I like really strong coffee. You can. Uh, yeah, this is, yeah. Yes, I mean, you can. Strong. Yeah, you can. Float a horseshoe in it. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can fix your, <laughs> fix your engines with this stuff. But it's, uh, it really is, it, 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 it has to be, it has to be very, uh, that's what I like. I like that really thick, mm -hmm. bold, dark flavor. And, yeah. Um, and, and, and that's been, it's, it's just been const constant. I mean, you've been, you've been having the you know my coffee for yeah for, yeah you know well, you and i have essentially the same taste <laughs> for coffee but you're just much better at brewing it than i am but uh you you uh there was there was a story behind how you somebody didn't somebody turn you on to seattle's best and you were surprised i remember you saying that you were surprised how good it was well i no, i found it because i mean i because like i said i experimented with different yeah different roasts and and uh i i tell you who else makes great coffee is pete's out of uh seattle they're, I think they're out of Seattle, but they that they make some really good stuff. But I can't can't find it all the time. Yeah. So that, and that's the cool thing about Seattle's best is it's actually <laughs> it's starting to sound like a sponsor now. The, the, they're mm -hmm. one of the most inexpensive brands you'll find in the stores. Uh, and they have a lot of different varieties too. But um, that's what I brew at home now too. But because he turned me on to it. Um, but anyway, so. I haven't really experimented with anything else. I mean, I only just started brewing at home like a year ago. Yeah. And uh, I've recently been trying some different stuff just because I, you know, the stores were sold out of, of so, many things, so many things. So I had, to, I had to had to branch out into some other brands, which aren't as good as <laughs> Seattle's best for sure. But I've, I've, I've done their number five, I've done their number six, and their medium roast. The breakfast blend, I think, is the one I'm going yeah, through. Yeah, I've right never now. seen a six. I don't, I've only seen Maybe, five. oh, for number four. Is it number four the one before that? There's, there's Port Alley and, yeah, and Bistro ones. number whatever. Yeah. Was. yeah, those are the two ones I've had, dark roast. And uh, ground, he asked about uh, ground or, or bean. Do you have a preference to that? Yeah, I said yeah. that at the beginning. So, okay. <laughs> you said whole bean, but what, so what kind of grind do you use? What do you have a, a specific like, uh, like you know when you go to when you go to H E B in the coffee aisle they have a a grinder there and they can get everything from from coarse to fine. Which, yeah, well, I, I I just grind it here. Well, what, what grind is it? Is it coarse? Is it fine? Is it? It medium? depends what you're doing. If you're doing stovetop, you have to do a little bit more coarse. If you're doing percolated, you need to you know a little finer. Nice, interesting. Yeah. This is the stuff we need to know. Yeah. Although I think you can find Pete's at Target. I don't go to Target. That's okay. But Nick, bring, take there. me with you. Wait in the car. Yeah. I'll crack the window. Pete's is with the two E's, right? P-E-T. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, and that they're that with their their storefronts too, or you know, in the airports and whatnot. That's been impressive. Yeah, you know, usually when you go to the airport, they'll make they can serve you Folgers because you can't you can't tell you know and you you can't go you know go back and spit it in their face because you're already on the flight. But uh, pizza has been impressive hmm. in 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 airports that I've been able to find it in. What's the one? What's the chain that's in uh, New Orleans? That's another good one. That's a good one. PJs. PJs. That's PJs. Right. Yeah, we PJs found them good. before. That's the yeah. one that we stopped off on 290. Um, on our way to, we were going out to Sherwood, I believe. Um, and we found PJs. And they are, that's some serious coffee. Yeah. They they, they know what they're doing. We're, we've, we're fans of going there in the morning and getting a little Irish coffee or yeah. a little something, something. To yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they have, they have the, uh, oh, yeah. They have the goods there? Yeah. Nice. But I mean, they're a great coffee shop. And they actually, some of them have really decent food, like yes. sandwiches and stuff like that, baked stuff. And then they have, they do offer, you know, like a like a, a liquor you can add in whatever you want to. In nice. It. Yeah. Yeah, we went to the the one in the French Quarter. Yep. I took the kids there, and and it, it that was exceptional. Yep. And that's again, that's the other thing with we we talk about all the time is you go to the local coffee shops if you can, and you know PJ's is a local, and you know local people work in there, and it was it was it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Really fun. We we found other places too, other uh, just no name coffee shops around the French Quarter that were really good as well. And uh, you know, I don't like chicory in my coffee. I don't like any. I yeah, it's like, a little strange. But. Yeah, but I mean, and and again, you, you would drink it in a pinch, but it's not. It's not, and it's not awful. It's not like somebody offering you raspberry flavored, raspberry chocolate flavored <laughs> coffee or something. Is it? So, uh, Eric, what what do you drink at home? Uh, you know, I like, I think I'm, I'm kind of a novice when it comes to the coffee thing. I've only been drinking it for 10 years and I'm still learning about how it flavor, how the flavor is. So when I go to, when I go to, um, H E B, I'll get a Sumatra, which is a super dark, um, roast and it's good, yummy, nice and strong. And sometimes I'll make a, sometimes I'll make a mix of a little bit of Hawaiian, a little bit of Costa Rican, a little bit of Sumatra and make a blend and then grind it right there Cool for, for the drip. And it just, uh, just nice mellow, tastes good. Going in the morning. All right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it is, but this stuff is really good. Yeah. Normally, I have a little, little something, something in my coffee, but I'm just drinking this one straight up, and it's uh, delish. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. 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 Good, good, good. Yeah, so what do you guys drink? You can tell us. You tell us. Yeah, come on. We're tired of talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Thank you, Dalton. And where did I put that damn thing? There it is. Uh, okay, so we've got two questions. It's a two-part question from John Nania. Uh, and John asks, what's the best concert you've ever seen musically, in terms of the musical performance? And then mm. as a follow-up to that, what's the best concert you've seen that's the best visually, in terms of just the overall presentation? Two different. Could be the same show. Could be two different shows. Musically and visually, oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of concerts. Yeah, yeah. I've I've never been to a show, so I, I'm. <laughs> Does the symphony count? Yeah, <laughs> the opera, the opera. Yeah. Uh, sonically, probably the best sound I've ever heard at a live show was Junior Brown and the Mavericks at the Jones Hall downtown Houston, uh. just because of the venue. It was. In to this day, I can't get over how, um, how crystal clear the sound was, and visually it was stunning too because it's a, it's such a well lit, it's such a, uh, um, just acoustically that room is insane. Mm -hmm. uh, how so? So that was I remember, I remember that. In particular, because the the Mavericks drummer, Paul Deacon, Paul Deacon, his arc, he pulls his he pulls his University of Miami graduate, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he his arm would to hit that snare. He would seem to extend it all the way behind his head before he just laid waste to that stick and that skin. Every note, it was in, in, insane to watch, but. Nobody else was drowned out. I and mean, we had them on a large riser, large drum riser, and of course, Raul Melo and his voice and, the, mm -hmm. and that room. It was just, and, and then of course, rewind to the beginning of the show, Junior Brown came out and did this 
just, you know, 90 minute set. And he really could have lip synced. It was just perfect. It was, but it was, it was too, it was too spontaneous. There was a lot of stuff that he threw in it. So that sonically, that was one of the best. Um, and then visually, probably one of, one of the best I saw uh, was um, uh, well, I saw Tom Petty in the Woodlands. They did that 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 massive big tree that this big uh, uh, just huge backdrop, and uh, that was that was pretty that was pretty cool. I felt I felt sorry for anybody on drugs or on <laughs> mushrooms or on uh, <laughs> anything for that because a if you missed any of it or b if you had to you know if you're if you went off in some other dimension watching that, you're you're you were in serious trouble. So that, that was a that was a, and all, and Seventh Son, the Iron Maiden stage show for Seventh Son was was pretty intense, and uh, saw that in um, just outside of Boston, um, and uh, that that was the the my favorite part of that show was uh, Ace Freely was opening for them, and we had a blowout, so we missed the whole thing. <laughs> That was my favorite time to see oh. any kind of any kind of sound. We missed we missed all of it. A uh, friend of mine up in uh, Boston, Billy Stamatis, his uh, Monte Carlo blew a tire on the way, and uh, but we still got to the show. We didn't miss any Iron Maid, but we we certainly missed Ace Freely. I was delighted, <laughs> delighted, because they they were all dying to see him. So what uh, what what year was that? That was uh, eighty nine, maybe. Apparently now he he's touring again. Well, I'm not now, but he's he's been touring again, and actually he's been doing okay. Like to see Ace Freely in '89 would be kind of rough. Oh, I, I yeah, I've yeah. no, I've no, yeah. And, and, and but I've seen I've seen video of him lately, and he's actually not terrible. Okay, I mean, but I mean, obviously it's that kind of music. Yeah. But uh, uh, an acquaintance, Matt Starr, plays drums for him, and and so he's been posting a bunch of stuff of them playing when they were playing, and it's not it's not. I think he's finally got his act kind of cleaned up and stuff like that. But when he was on drugs, I can imagine how terrible that show must yeah. have been. Well, I, I, I didn't like any of his stuff anyway. Fair, yeah, fair enough. And yeah. I didn't like, yeah, especially don't like any Kiss stuff. So, Chad? <laughs> um, I had to think about this for a while. Me too. But, um, because there's so many things to choose from. Um, I think, I think the, the show that, that, that first came to mind when I was thinking of like best musically and it was just thrilling for me too. It was when I saw David Byrne play. It was like the first time I saw him play. I knew he was going to say that. Yeah. I knew. <laughs> it, at, uh, in New York at the Supper Club. And it was back in the mid 90s when he was touring on. He just put out a self titled, titled record, which is really great. Um, it's it's, uh, when, it's an under, well, most of his solo stuff is underrated, really, compared to the Talking Head stuff. But it's, I, I, I refer to it as his guitar album because he's, he's really underrated guitar player. He's actually really good really distinctive style and he plays a lot of lead lead guitar on that hmm. record and he has a really great drummer whose name i forget and a guy playing marimbas that's just kind of interesting nice uh and a really good bass player you gotta do the visual yeah, yeah. right yeah. just you know marimba visual it's like this drum set. it's like this <laughs> and that was not only that sound great but it was a general admission show and it, supper club was kind of like house of blues in houston where you you, you can just do the general mission area in the front you can walk up to the stage if you get there on time and and then there's a balcony, on you know on the, around the second level, um, kind of like a kind of like a uh, what Tower Theater was here before yes. they turned it into a restaurant, very much like that actually. But anyway, so we were right up at the front of the stage, and and it was just a thrill to see my hero, you know, that close and in really great great form. Um, so that was really good. I think visually, um, oh god. Probably, probably would be David Bowie's uh, Sound and Vision tour. I think was the presentation on that show was was pretty amazing. And it's just the only the only reason why I hesitate is because I was so both times I saw that that tour because I saw it in Houston at Woodlands and I saw it up in Dallas. Uh, th that was an outdoor. All, all those tours, at least the two I saw, were in outdoor uh, arenas, um, and we had to sit all the way back on the lawn, mm -hmm. you know, so we're really far away. And in Dallas, it was raining too, which didn't, didn't add to the enjoyment at all. <laughs> but that show was, was, uh, it was a really, one of the things I liked about that show too was, was it was very, um, the, the band was really simplistic. You know, they just had, it was Adrian Ballou and his band basically were his band on that show. Uh, so it was basically like, I think a four piece band, you know, nothing, nothing too fancy. 
and then but then the and then these these incredible visuals where they had uh, every song was accompanied by this massive projection that was right above them um so it was this really interesting the way it was all laid out and designed was incredible hmm. um and it's that's one you don't see i haven't really seen any good footage of that on on youtube or anything i, I don't really know if, if they filmed it, it i don't know if it ever, ever ever actually was released officially i don't know so that was a good one but yeah that's that's a really really tough call because i've there's so many shows i've seen i mean like like for the mark knopfler i was thinking that one one that <laughs> yeah. could classify in both both uh you know both visually and musically it was just, yeah it was, it, was, it was yeah there were some sound issues there from where i think but i think it was mostly where we were sitting yeah his vocals were kind of buried but visually it was just gorgeous and yeah you know anyway yeah there's yeah there's so many i mean it's just where, where, where was that mark knopfler show Sh um stafford stafford center yeah um, really yeah wow that place right, is tiny revention right revention music Shit. center i think it's called revention no that's downtown well, what was that place called? It had some weird name. Stafford Music Hall. There's Stafford. Uh, uh, Revention uh, used to be called like Verizon or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's Verizon. Yeah, the Bayou. Yeah, the there was something the else. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Down by the Hard Rock. Yeah. So yeah, what's, your, what, some weird what's your? What's that? What's your? God, it's like Chad and you and and Patrick. It's like there's too many too many really standout ones that are just amazing. You know, I think. My first real big like rock show was Dio on the Last in Line tour. And when you're, you know, when you're 14 years old and you see this giant pyramid on stage and you're like, where's the band going to be? And all of a sudden the pyramid lifts off, top of it lifts off and there's the drum set. And there's two sphinxes that are turning their heads with laser eyes and smoke coming out of their <laughs> faces. Nice. Visually, it's kind of stunning, you know, to see a metal show. Because back in the 80s, metal shows were like that. You know, well, the Iron Maiden is still like that. Though. Yeah. I mean, they still bring out the plane and giant walking eddie and eddie behind the thing but you know being a kid and seeing that visually was just like holy shit you know it was pretty pretty wild and then of course and the subsequent tours were the next one was the dragon the giant dragon on the stage and then uh, the the last one i saw the dream evil tour was i don't even know what it, what it was but it was like it was the basically the dream evil tour was the like the basically okay after this no more no more stage no more stage shows because it was at the end of the eighties by then. And, and, and that kind of thing was kind of dying out. But like orally, like, like, like sonically one of the better, gee, I don't even know. Can't even think of one that was like a really great, I, I, when I saw the Rollins band, they sounded awesome, but uh, they were loud. I mean, they were really loud to the end of the night. Like my ears were just like, <laughs> what? you know but they sounded they sounded so good and it was just a three-piece band with henry doing whatever henry does screaming i guess yeah you know but the bass player was this gigantic african-american guy and the, and the regular guitar player and the regular drummer from you know the rollins band from years ago and they were just funky cool like really really cool sounding and the, the way the bass player played those and this that's kind of a hard rock band i mean they're yeah. they're kind of not heavy metal but they're kind of punk and they're kind of like thrashy and aggressive but the bass player the way he played that stuff was just like it wasn't like i mean there were guys in the front that were going ah, you know doing the crazy but i was just like dang this is funky you know kind of stuff so ron's band sounded good um <clears throat> no actually the last time we saw uh the last time we saw todd he had this crazy like um led like screen behind him so and the, and the thing was they were supposed to put the screen in front of him and they would play behind it for the first half of the show, and then they would lift the screen and do the second half of the show. But it was behind them, and visually that was cool too. I mean, it sounded great, but visually it was it was cool too. There's just too many. I mean, there's too many, yeah. too many concerts, that, and, and we've all been to hundreds and hundreds of shows. That yeah, just thanks, like, John. Yeah, uh, that's a tough one. Yeah, and the, you might be interested to talk about the loudest show too. <laughs> I've got some stories. Ario about Speedwagon that. for me. Oh, really? Ario really? Speedwagon, 1980. Six or eighty-seven in Port Portland, Maine, oh, uh, Cumberland County right. Civic Center. God, it's fucking louder than the Rollins Band. Wow! And I think it was because my girlfriend, my high school girlfriend, Katie, wanted to go, so we went. You know, and they got that one song I like, and and uh, it wasn't the one that was out at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It was one one of the first release. I think we may have talked about that. But <clears throat> they came out. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be fun. And god damn, it, I think it was because the place was like maybe three quarters full. It wasn't completely sold out. So that sound just, and it's a hockey arena. So the sound just bounced yeah. around that concrete wall. Oh my God. Just, mm. oh, yeah, I still saw, hear it today. I saw Pantera 
here in town. Ooh. And that was pretty loud. And I've seen Motorhead a handful of times, and that was pretty loud. But I think the loudest I saw was when uh, it was uh, Megadeth, uh, who I, I, I'm not a fan. Um, some, some good guitar pieces in that thing, but that, that voice. Uh, it's a little rough. Yeah. I like him, but I, that voice, Dave's voice can be kind of like, ooh, here we yeah. go. Yeah. I, I, you know, I enjoy some of the rhythms and some of the, some of the guitar work. Not a fan, but uh, then, uh, and then Motorhead and then Slayer. And that was, by the yeah. end of the night, that was pretty, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty, <laughs> hearing was, hearing was done. Yeah. Hearing was done. And actually, uh, I, I saw Guns N' Roses on the Appetite for Destruction tour in Boston. Oh. And that was loud. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm in, I'm in front of Slash's. I'm on Slash's side. Well, yeah, there's so. that. Like the first time I saw Matthew Sweet, I stood there in front of the uh, Ivan Julian's amp. And it wasn't a mistake because I wanted to be up front. But still, it's just like, but, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah paid yeah. for that one. Yeah. Chad, what's the latter show you've been there? into um the 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 thing that first comes to mind is the very first not the first concert i saw but the very first really really loud rock concert i saw was in in high school uh my friend jason coster uh convinced sean morelli and i (laughs) to go see uh husker du play and uh oh shit sean and i didn't know anything about them but jason was a huge huge fan of theirs Mm -hmm. jason was into you know motorhead and um he, he he was he was into the Pixies before I know any for anybody else I know this, but this was before the Pixies, but this would have been eighty five or something like that. So we went to and y'all wouldn't remember this place, uh, a place called the Masiba Theater, which used to be it's torn down now. It used to be right right across at the on the opposite corner from where Sears was on Main Street. This old theater probably dates back dated back to the thirties or something like that, and. Uh, <laughs> It was so freaking loud. And we, I remember just being, I couldn't move. I was just so overwhelmed by how loud it was. Number one, I mean, I'm sure it was, it was as loud as I remember, but also that I had never been exposed to those volume levels before at that mm-hmm. tender age. So my <laughs> ears were ringing for weeks yeah. after that. And I remember we would pass each other in the halls, like Sean and I would pass, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, we were yeah. both kind of, in, in, you know, traumatized in, in shock after that experience because Sean and I were just both sitting there like this and Jason's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they were, they were fucking loud. Bob Mould hell. was, yeah. Yeah. He talks about how, he talks about how like after shows he'd have to play like the radio on static, like almost at full volume to mm-hmm. cut out the ringing in his own ears just so he'd go to sleep at night. You know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And when I saw Sugar play, in 90, whatever sure, year that yeah, was, gosh, 92, about that. in Boston, me and my sister and my buddy Brent went, and um, we actually bought earplugs on the way down because we wanted to go right up front, and we were standing right in front of those speakers. We had our earplugs in, and it was still like, you know, like, you know, filling, knocking out, inducing loud, and I mean, and this is three of them on stage, you know. Well, actually, then then uh, the loudest thing that we've ever experienced, I know I, I speak for uh, was uh, the My Bloody Valentine? Yes. When you, as soon as you said ear- earplugs, yeah. So we, we went to see them in Austin, and the, the end. Yeah. Which that, we, when they just unleash, that, and we were prepared for that. Yeah, we were. We, but, we had been warned. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, you could feel it. But it was it it was it was, uh, probably the same as leaning into a a, a hurricane wind. Being able to, you could lean against this wall of sound yeah, that was just yeah. knocking you over, you know. So you could, but yeah, it was blowing your blowing your. So that was it. Yeah, and and again, I'm I'm not. Uh, that's that's not what I like to do for for fun. Is to, you know, uh, it, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be worth it. It's got to be, you know, yeah, got to be amps and you know guitars and squeals yeah i mean there is and like to your point there is something when it's loud it's like it almost stuns you Mm -hmm. because it does affect your you know what's going on in your inner ear which is your whole balance point anyway so there's this stuff like whoa yeah like i mean i've noticed that from just doing what we do like if i have earplugs in if if it's if it feels like it's too uncomfortably loud when you when you are managed to bring it down it's like oh you know now i can actually relax and yeah it improves the way i play you know if i'm not stressed out by by that as well. Yeah. 
So, of course, we're all in here now, so that's no longer really an issue. Well, that was yesterday. You know, we again, uh, big, big thanks to our friend Keith over at A&E. Yes. Uh, cleaning supplies. Mm-hmm. That was that was a just that was really fun. But he was he was kind of shocked that the sound was so clear. But I was explaining that when back when we had amplifiers and monitors on the ground, it was. 10 times as loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so we, we, we brought that down, you know. Yeah. It's funny because uh, I was uh, looking at the footage that I got because we had a huge technical problem at the beginning of the show. Anybody who was watching yesterday, I apologize for the delay there. But thanks for sticking with us, those that did. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for sticking around. <laughs> um, but I had, a, originally, my original plan was to have a camera in front of us and a camera kind of behind us, like, so you could see Eric a little better than, mm. you, than you usually can in these things. And uh, so, I so said. I only got the first song, but unfortunately, the the front camera just wasn't working at all. The, all that all that footage got lost. But uh, I went back and, and watched the the Eric cam afterwards. It was just one song, um, but basically, all you can hear is the drums because <laughs> there's no amps back there. Oh, you yeah. can just a faint. You can you just need? all what you can hear is that because the mains are in front, and you can just barely faintly hear them off in the distance. And we're moving around, but fortunately, you know, I, I recorded the show on the board, so I can go and take, you know, I can go and mix that, and it would just be that's the only angle I have. So that one song will be the Eric Cam nice. experience. That's nice. Patty Public Enemy Number One was the song. But yeah, anyway. a how to it was my own my own how to drum video. Yes, how to play this song. But yeah, that was a really cool experience too, because there was uh, a lot of neighbors who were in the vicinity heard the show and just would ride their bikes by and they were taking pictures and stuff. There's a pic, a guy, the guy, Jimmy, we were talking to, uh, posted a picture of us oh, cool. uh, on, on Instagram. He's a, he's a drummer. Sort of behind the scenes with the two cameras, uh, set up in front of us and so forth. Yeah. Every, everybody was just so nice. Everybody's just coming by on the bikes and the, and walking by and on their, the, the riding mowers. <laughs> yeah. The old guy on the riding mower. Yeah. yeah. What's going on over here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's music. Okay, fine. Yeah, nobody was complaining. Nobody was concerned. They were just happy to. Stephen and his crew so. stayed out there till probably I don't know eight o'clock or so. Really? Yeah, I remember peeking out after dinner. Well, like, they, oh, they're still there. They that, that man. They they came for they came for the day. He when was, I saw the tarp go up. Yeah, yeah they. That was, I, I thought they were just going to come and just hang and use the tarp to keep the you know sun off of them. Next thing you know, I could see the smoke. I could smell the grill. Yeah, I could yeah. smell it. Smell yeah. like fish or a grill. I was I was talking with them a little bit after. He's like, "Come on, sit down, have a beer, have a hot dog." I'm like, "No, I'm gonna." We got dinner waiting at home, and they were just out there. That old guy was singing karaoke to his own music. You notice that? That tape that the, or whatever they were playing was yeah. their band. And he's, uh, and he's the singer, and he was had a microphone. Is oh, that what's what it was? He had a microphone okay. plugged into the whatever wow. it was, boombox or whatever, and he Note was singing yourself. along with his own <laughs> yeah. versions of those True songs. Future. Yeah. So funny. I can't wait to be that old and be like, yep. Yeah. And he's <laughs> playing air guitar to all this stuff. <laughs> No, wait, that's Great. my, that's my so move. Good. He, he can't do that. Well, that's, I'm just saying. It's his band. Okay. Cosmos, Cosmos Street Band, I think they're called. <clears throat> Reminds me of that guy who was playing in the, in the hotel bar in, in Sligo last year. Remember that guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, wow. We're, we're motoring through these, these, these questions here. Are there more questions? There, there is. Well, I've got a question before that one. But so, yeah. so what's, we got the, time? what's the worst show you've been to? Ooh. And I don't care visually or, you know, but you, uh, you know, because as we were sitting there thinking or, to, you know, thinking of these answers and answering the, the question from John, yeah. I was thinking to myself, what's the, where, where is my, you know, because you remember, I remember I saw Gary Moore in Dublin when I was a kid, because you're talking about Dio, and I saw Dio as well. I saw Queensryche open for Dio in SFX in Dublin, and it, that was, it was it was it was Vivian Campbell. Uh, oh yeah, Vinnie Apice. Yeah, the real, the, yeah. the, 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 the original, original lineup. Yeah, Jimmy Bain. Jimmy Bain. Yeah, and uh, but I remember seeing those shows, thinking this is as good as it gets musically. This is good. Gary Moore. Uh, just was it good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but was he Queen, that was, was his, that was his huh? Was Queen's Rice good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was that yeah, the this, Operation Mind Crime? Was no, 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 that shit. No, this is all Queen of the Reich and. Okay. Uh, you know, this is the early, early, early stuff yeah, where he was, got, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and Scott Rockenfield had that, the drummer had that, uh, the chains, you know, it, 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 instead of uh, cymbal stands and, and the chains, you know, all the hardware yeah. was oh, like yeah. gold chains. Yeah. Tama drums, yeah. 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 And, and 
played his ass off. I mean, played better than than uh, than he ever did. Yeah, no, he's actually he's actually he's, he's, he's a good he's drummer, a really good drummer. But the, the guitar players are kind of watery for me. Anyway, so but you know we're sitting there talking about all these all these bands that we've seen. I was thinking, what's the what's the stuff that because I, I I was went to some to some <laughs> to some pretty horrific shows, and the one that stands out. To two that stand out. Um, I'm not an Elton John fan, but I went to see Elton John at the, in the Woodlands, and whoever uh, took me to that show didn't tell me it was just Elton John, just him and a piano. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. And uh, or is it Bernie Taupin, the the songwriter, the lyricist, yeah, lyricist. Oh, okay, that's not him. Who's the uh, who's the old guy, the percussion player? Oh, the bald dude. Yeah, Ray Cooper. I think it sounds right. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. We talked about him before. He came out for yeah. two or three songs. Yeah, and then the son of a bitch went home. <laughs> he left. I said, "Don't leave us alone with him." <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and I apologize to any Elton John fans, but my God, I can't. <laughs> I can't take more than. Oh, oh, and it was just him, just him and the piano. I said, "We'll set the f- piano on fire or something. Do something. You know, nothing." So that was the one, but then the second worst, that was the worst. No, maybe it was the maybe it's the second worst. Uh, let's flip it. So then the absolute worst that I've been to was Tori Amos, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what kind of what I was doing, who I was chasing to go to that one, but whoever took me to that show, oh, <laughs> if there was a pistol close by, oh, mm. yeah, you, there's, you really have to like her. That's a hard sell. Yeah. yeah. That's a really yeah because I um, uh, my cousin's band opened for them opened for her in a different venue, and I went and we left long before she started. But that time went it was the Tower Theater. Oh, that was the Tower Theater. Uh, I was probably there. I was probably at that show. Was this early nineties? Yeah, 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 it had to be. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I met her that night. (laughs) Did you? Yeah, how'd that work out? Yeah, it was great. No, I mean, she's really. I mean, as a person, I've met her a couple of times. Actually, she's really cool, and and I, I had a huge as me and my friends did at the same time when when she first came out. At those early times, I we were in love with her because mm. we thought she was gorgeous, and I I did buy her first couple of records, and I I understand why you don't like her. I understand why a lot of people wouldn't like her. She got heavily criticized in the beginning for ripping off. Kate Bush. They just people just thought she was just mimicking Kate Bush with her singing voice and all that stuff. Just you know, I understand I, yeah, that too. I, I, but I I, I kind of lost interest in her after the second record came out. I just I could not get over the 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 the. I mean, I could see how you like her too. <laughs> uh, the 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 poetry side of it and and incredibly intelligent and and yes. great lyrics and blah blah blah. Except I just can't take that meandering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, that formless. And it, she, her, just, her stuff went up more in that direction after later. It got that's one of the reasons why I just well, yeah, it's just to, but to me it was just absolutely so boring. Yeah. But the best part of the show was when somebody decided to heckle her. Mm-hmm. And not heckle her. They were oh, I love you too. Yeah. He's like shut the fuck Duck up. up. <laughs> and I was like all right. Yes, all right, I remember I'll give that. you that. I'll give you that. But that was the saving. That was the saving grace. I was like do that again. Mm-hmm. That's that's. A, but yet. Yeah, and again, just so bored, so bored, and and so um, uh, uh, again, something's got to be happening. I'm 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 like a I'm like a child. I, there has to be something <laughs> moving, something happening. And this was a piano yeah. and a poet and nothing. Yeah. Do you have a war show, Eric? A lot of times for me, it's been the opening band. Yeah. You know, it's not because because you you want to go see the headliner. And I was oh I was always in the mindset well if we get there early we'll get a good spot kind of a thing kind of a thing and then but then you got to suffer through the the headliner and so the one th- one thing that really disappointed me was um, I saw Cheap Trick I keep talking about Cheap Trick I saw them on my um, uh, on my thirtieth birthday on my actual day of my birthday. I saw them in Boston and I was so excited because it was really as being a longtime fan, I always missed them when they would come around. And so finally I got tickets to the, to the, uh, the Avalon ballroom in Boston. 
which is now, I think, uh, uh, House of Blues behind, or at least it was behind uh, the Green Monster in Fenway. Oh, yeah. Where the, where the ballpark is. So you have, you'd have Fenway, and then you'd have Lansdowne Street, and there was the Avalon Ballroom. We played at Copperfields down the road from there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's always nice, especially when there was like a punk rock show and there's a ball game, because you'd have the nice mix of families and baseball fans and all these punk rocker kids like kind of like crossing the street with each other. So it was always fun to see that. Anyway, so we get there and there's a band called Guided by Voices. Who, yes. Who, yeah. who, who, who I didn't know about. And they, it was a, it was, and I, it also it was a co headlining set. So 90 minutes and 90 minutes when you used to opening band doing. 35 to 45 minutes or so and then the headliner comes out and uh, I was just getting more and more pissed during <laughs> I was like these fucking guys and I know you probably like them which is fine well it depends on what time you what what lineup you saw too well uh, it was and uh, how drunk the lead singer was <laughs> no it wasn't him it was a guitar player that got super drunk like grabbing a bottle of Jack Daniels and just taking glug, 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 so what year was this 99 you know I know Maybe it was Doug. There's a good guy, his guitar. I really love this this guitar player too, but he, I don't know if I, he's been in and out of the band or he was for a while. Doug Gillard, I think is his name. He was kind of skinny, kind of super short hair. Yeah. And anyway, as, as the set went on. He must have been on, having a rough night because I've never seen him. On drink. the set went on, it was just like, he was just like oh, stumbling. So, yeah. The cool thing about seeing them was they played, two things were cool about them. One was they played a song I actually liked, which I still like called Surgical Focus. Hmm. And the only reason I like that song is because it sounds super poppy unlike the rest of their songs, which are between, you know, 30 seconds and, you know, three minutes long. And um, the drummer from the Breeders um, was playing drums with them. So that was kind of cool to see him play. Oh, cool. And then, but I was just like, get the fuck off the stage. And there was like four Guided by Voices fans there. And the rest of the crowd was just like, oh no, come on. Wow. Wrap it up. You know, kind of thing. It was kind there were only four? Well, there was maybe more than that, but they were all up front and they were basically just like, these guys rule and the rest of us was like uh you know that's as a 30 year old i was <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. the old guy in the room bring on cheap trick god damn it you know wow kind of a thing i saw them twice uh i saw them in new york at irving plaza that was great and then i saw them at fitzgerald's uh and that was that was good too but that i ow <laughs> freaking meryl my buddy brent who who is a huge fan and he's a good friend of mine and he plays in the high the the high roller band when we were living in Austin he's like I'm gonna buy you a ticket because he knew how much I hated them because I just told that story I told I told you guys he's like I'm gonna buy you a ticket we'll go see them they're playing at the parish which is at on 6th street upstairs in Austin and I, I guess it's still called that now not a, not a huge place he's like I'll buy you a ticket let give me give him a second chance I'm like okay fine you're gonna buy me a ticket I'll fucking go I guess you just didn't like him. <laughs> Bob Pollard is a really, he's a, he was a really interesting guy. Incredibly intelligent. He used to be a teacher before. English, he English teacher. I yeah. thought he still was, unless he retired. But Huh? I thought he was still teaching. It, it, I don't think so. I think okay. he, but, but I don't, I don't really know. But he's, uh, I have a lot of respect for that guy. Uh, he's He's got a bit of a drinking problem. Though. Well, I think most of that band did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although that night, apparently at the parish, they were only drinking beer, so they were fine. Yeah, but they were fine. he used to have a thing where he would throw, he'd, he'd bring a, it was kind of like, it was kind of like David Beebe and, and his RC Cola. He'd bring out a, a cooler of, of Bud Light, whatever his core is, whatever his beer choice was, but he'd be throwing cans, like giving beer to the, to the audience. Yeah. At some point he was told he can't do that anymore. <laughs> so he, so like that he was, that was like the early, when I, when I saw him, they weren't doing that, but. But yeah, um, yeah. Usually know. for me, it's been like opening bands. Like, cause, cause you really want to see that. Yeah. Until finally I yeah. started like. Who's the opening band? Uh, well, maybe I'll get there a little bit later. Yeah. Especially if it's like a situation where it's like a reserved seat kind of thing, like a bigger show or whatever. You can, yeah. you can go and just you know, oh, I'll just show up when I show up, and there's my seat. Yeah. That kind of a thing. But yeah, extreme. Seeing extreme, I didn't really want to see extreme. Oof. Oh, because that's why we went to go. We went to go see Aerosmith because it was like they had just finally cleaned up their act. It was a permanent. They were finally getting back on the road. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool, fun to see them. Who's opening up for them? Guns N' Roses, hell yeah. Appetite for Destruction tour, right? Except for the Portland, Maine. Oh. So it was the one show that, two shows. They didn't do the Portland. I think I talked about this before already. But for whatever reason, Guns N' Roses didn't play either Portland, Maine or Portland, Oregon on this tour. And so we get there and it's like, oh, Guns N' Roses is not going to be here. Oh, who's going to open up Extreme? Who the hell is that? You know, and they were just, they were rough. Yeah. yeah. 
but they, it. It, was before, it was before they had their, all their big hits, which are still kind of rough. Mm. Um, yeah, because they're all their big hits. Isn't there just one? Uh, is it just one? Is it one or two? I thought it was one. More than one. And that's generous. The yeah. ballad thing, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> which my brother had played at his wedding, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah just got chilly yeah yeah all right let's talk about uh we still need to talk about the dead band member thing right yeah yeah we have not Is gotten next on the yet. list we touched we, 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 we teased it early yeah. on when you're talking about what would cheap trick do so yeah who wants to start <laughs> the question patrick posed this question a couple weeks ago um bands that should have broken up after somebody in the band died, but didn't, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I was just curious, who, who would you think wouldn't want the band to go, carry on if they, if if they, they were to croak? And, and Mick Jaggers always comes to mind when I was, when oh. I was, when I was thinking about that. I was thinking, yeah. wouldn't he... I mean, and it'd be kind of difficult, you know, unless you could teach like a chimp to, uh, to, <laughs> to prance around. How hard like could it be? Huh? I know. That's what I'm saying. Um, come over here. Now go over there. Now yeah. come back over here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a, you know, that the, I, I can't, I'm not a Stones fan, but the, 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 his, I, I, his personality is the front of that band. Yeah. And I couldn't see anybody stepping into that role. No. Uh, so, so that was, the, that, that was the, you know, the, that was the, the thing that kind of sparked me the, to, to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when, when, uh, when Bon Scott died from ACDC and Brian Johnson came in, there was an, uh, you know, a, 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 a you know, sizable uh, amount of people that were, sure, you know, going to turn their back on it and not, you know, sure. And Brian Johnson for, you know, love him or hate him. I mean, he just, he absolutely, mm -hmm. Yeah, and absolutely is overused, but he, that word is overused and used in, incorrectly. But in this case, I think absolutely carried that band in the direction that they needed to go. And, yeah. and I've seen them, I've seen them way, way back then. I've seen them recently on the Black Eye, Black Eyes tour, Black Black Trainer Roll, whatever the hell the last tour was. And they were, they were, they were, they were firing on all cylinders, and yeah, you know, so. Um, so I, I'm just I'm curious what what bands would you think would you, you, you know like a like a sudden death? Um, so we're not talking about <clears throat> about bands that have already had a band member doesn't, die. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It okay. doesn't matter. I, just, I, I'm, I I'm just curious. So 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 we all know that that the, these these uh, these musicians have the biggest egos probably around. Uh, <laughs> You know, in in <laughs> just uh, 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 in general, you know, they they they, they kind of do, and uh, so um, do you have? Is, you, is, is there anybody that comes to mind immediately? You know, when you think the, you know, do, you know, no, absolutely no way, we're not. If anybody in U two dies, that that band is done. I mean, just the four of them. They haven't. There's never been any any outside members. I think if any one of the four of them dies, they're probably going to call it quits. But not that I care. That's not a baron to care about. No, I'm no. Just, yeah, yeah, I'm I know, just trying to think of be. bands that are still together. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And uh, and uh, speaking of chimpanzees, if you two got <laughs> you know, if 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 a chimp played drums, well, you know, about that. <laughs> so could, yeah. you, you could replace that rhythm section, and no one would know the difference. I, that's I, I know. I know. That's what we. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, both of them. I mean, both Adam and and Larry. You can yeah. get rid of both those guys, and just and and no one would give a shit. Yeah, yeah. You should just have. You should just put. Bono and Edge on tour with a drum machine and a guy playing keyboard and like keyboard. You don't need that's even that's that. even too much. <laughs> what you could do is you could you could record uh, an elevator going up and down <laughs> and just play to that. Uh, anyway, yeah. No, I, I you know I, I understand I understand the the impact that they had on the but I, I agree one of those one of those guys yes because it's larry's band from what i understand larry yeah it the, started with an ad or a notice he put up yeah but even still i mean he's still from what i you know understand calls the he calls the shots yeah yeah so, but yeah. i mean i just know how tight those guys are and that they it just doesn't seem like they would want to continue if one yeah. of them died but um yeah but yeah. And, and again maybe i didn't even ask the question correctly i'm just thinking what would what would 
the what would the band what band would continue on? Let, let's say Steve Harris, Iron Maiden. Let's say we all faithful. If he had an accident, uh, I don't see anybody being able to to guide that because that's there, that's, that's a lot name. of personality on that stage. Yeah. yeah, and different, hugely different people, and music tastes forever. Yeah, in in all different directions. Yeah. Uh, so if that was to happen, I couldn't see uh, I couldn't see an Iron Maiden. Yeah, I don't, at all. I mean, Steve himself has had to go and start what? Uh, what's it Br- called? British Lion. British Lion, because he was bored because they weren't touring enough. It seems like the guys, if they had an opportunity to just say, "Oh, at this point, they probably would." Yeah, I don't know. That I just saw that I was like, I, I, I don't like. I've only heard a little bit of that stuff, but I just think, I just think it's cool that he wants to be out there that badly that he put another band. Well, what together, else is he gonna you know? do? Go to work I know. At a, you know, at yeah. The grocery so, store. But, and he's a workaholic, absolute yeah. workaholic. But if, but if he's having that much trouble getting the guys out to tour as much as he wants to go, I mean, they're probably they're like, all right, <laughs> we're done. You know, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I, at the same time, I could see just like you see with Thin, Thin Lizzy and all these other bands that somehow still managed to to put tours together just because they. I don't know. Didn't yeah, I, I, I didn't agree with the Thin Lizzy. I, I went to see them yeah. when they came to Houston way back when, but um, I didn't agree with that. Uh, however, when it was Scott Gorham playing guitar and Brian Downey didn't come to the States, the drummer, um, he, um, but Tommy Aldridge on drums, you know, you have to go see Tommy it's Aldridge tough, if you get call. a chance. Um, but, and then John Sykes playing guitar, which John Sykes and Gary Moore were my favorite lead guitar. Scott Gorm was always a favorite, but uh, John Sykes was actually one of my favorite uh, lead players in Thin Lizzy because he took so much of Gary Moore's stuff and then he added so much of his own. And, and, and John Sykes is an incredible guitar. I saw him as Blue Murder in Florida a few times and I wasn't, wasn't thrilled with the stuff, but his guitar playing and he's good. He's like, he's, Decent voice. And Carmine was he singing lead? Carmine played yes. He in Blue Murder. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, what? John Sykes was singing lead with that lineup. Was he? Uh, in within Lizzie when they came through when Houston. Came to, yeah, yeah, the first time. Okay. So um, was he was he doing like a, a Phil Philo impression? No, right? no, no, no. But they 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 um, he he's he's got a much better voice than and his it. it uh, he sounded a whole lot better uh, than uh, than he did back with Thin Lizzy. Mm-hmm. You know, again, just doing backups. But he really and he 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 credits Phil um, line it to his you know for his music. You know, as so many people did. Yeah. You know, I was I, I was shocked. To, I was shocked to hear Lemmy. You know, call him out and oh really? Yeah, people yeah. just people people that you wouldn't think. Uh, you know. Uh, you know who you you wouldn't have thought of Phil had influenced. He he did. Mm. The, the, the probably the biggest surprise for most people would be Huey, Huey Lewis. Um, yeah, there I saw an interview with Huey recently, uh, where he spent part a lot of the interview talking about his hearing problems. You know, yeah, and how that's been rough. But he, they did talk about Philo for a, for a long time uh, about how Phil basically you know, took him under his wing and said he, you know helped him develop his or figure out what he was going to do. And yeah. You know, because he was just a just a harmonica player in Clover at the time. You yeah, know, and he wasn't really a lead guy. And uh, and Huey plays on his Live and Dangerous song. Yeah. you know, Baby Drives Me Crazy. Yeah. You know, and 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 I am not a harmonica fan. In you know, even but Huey Lewis comes along. You kind of okay, it, okay, it, it works. Yeah. Um, so are there? So I think I think the the thing that we're thinking about too is like it seems like a lot of these bands are a lead person or a, a guitar player. You know, it just seems like if you lose, like if you lose, and again, we talked about this at the beginning of the show, like if you lose a drummer, Led Zeppelin being, well, being, being and, they did. And, and the who. Right. And there's two That's different circumstances there. Because yeah. when John Bonham died, they are like, we're done. We're done. Yeah. And that made perfect sense because mm-hmm. we talked about this before, like, you know, Jason went out and, and did a tour with them and, and it was fine. And because Jason's, plays a lot like his dad, but it's just, it's different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not quite the same. It's not going to be the same and it's fine. But with the who we were talking about this the other day, mm-hmm. me and Chad were about like Keith Moon is definitely, you know, a very influential drummer. And, 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 and although he talks about, I guess throughout most of his life, he wanted to play surf music. 
He just wanted to be in a surf band, or he wanted. <laughs> yeah, to be, he was a big Beach Boys. He, want, he wanted to be either in, in the Beach Boys, or he wanted to be in the Beatles. He couldn't figure out what you wanted to do, but he just kind of kept slugging, literally slugging away at the at the Who stuff, and it just all that music makes sense with him playing drums. Kenny Jones, so they he dies unfortunately, and then they hire Kenny Jones as a sideman mm -hmm. to play, and then the sound changed, but it definitely was an updated modern sound because by then it was the eighties. And you said that Pete wanted to kind of go in a different direction anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, and and I've read his bio, his autobiography recently. I was talking about that briefly last week. That he, uh, I, I think that Pete really, in his heart, didn't want to do The Who anymore at that point. That he was really kind of doing it for the sake of John and, and Roger. You know, and it's still now, I think he's doing it mainly for Roger's sake. And he said that. That was a tour... They were here recently, last year, and Roger, Roger had a problem with his voice. So Pete just comes out and says, "Sorry, we can't play. This is pretty much Roger's show. You know, he's he's the star. You know, if you know if he can't go on, there's no point in it." Because Pete could have sang stuff himself, sure. but he chose not to do that. But that's what he said. He basically put it on Roger's shoulders. So crazy. And I, uh, and uh, Kenny was more than a side man too. I mean. Uh, Pete wanted he was he brought him in as a full member and that was a point of contention with with him with and Roger because yeah. he brought him in at full full you know scale you know same share of money yeah, that, Kenny that talks that's about in, that in his book yeah, yeah and Roger did not like that at all but and, and Kenny didn't want to do it at first he, he, there's he, any interview you, you you see with him talking about how this happened like that was I think Kit Lambert was their manager manager at the time called him maybe then it could be I don't know but uh his his initial response was like no, because <laughs> yeah. he knew Keith. He knew they were already friends for, for years. He used yeah. to tour together when he was in the small faces. He says, I can't replace Keith. Are you out of your mind? I can't do that. So Pete Townsend had to sweet talk him, basically. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you had to go through a bottle of wine, and then finally he asked him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I think that uh, what's, what's a shame, you just look at what happened, because they went and did <clears throat> hard. Uh, oh, it's hard. And before they went, face dances, and it's hard. And that was it. And uh, one of the problems with face dances too is that Pete brought in Bill Simsek, who was known mainly for producing the Eagles. And Kenny complains about that in one of the interviews. It's like, we sound like the bloody Eagles. What the hell is going on? And it's a great sounding record, but it doesn't yeah. sound like, and I'd still, I love that record too. But what, this was really telltale. I saw, I found an interview with, with Bill Simsek talking about how, what a, he didn't like doing that record because, um, the guys were arguing a lot, I guess, but one of the things that, that he said that was, was a dead giveaway of why, for example, the band wasn't happy with him, or I think Pete was, nobody else was, that he, he says he had a really hard time trying to convince John Entwistle that he wasn't a lead guitar player. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> how can you be that dense? Right. You know, fine, I, I understand his pedigree with the Eagles, but it's the freaking who. They were already beyond right. their legendary status at this point, you yeah. know, and you're going to tell John Entwistle how to play the bass? Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting too, and we can move on after this, but I think it's interesting that the drummers that they had after Kenny Jones were Simon Phillips, who mm -hmm. was a monster. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 that, and then Zach Starkey. Yes. Who's been the most current drummer. Yes. And if you listen to Zach's playing with The Who, he sounds more like mm -hmm. Keith Moon than I think Simon ever did, and more, of course more than Kenny ever sure. did. And the reason why is because at some point Ringo and Keith were mm -hmm. neighbors. Mm -hmm. And when Ringo was away, um, Zach would wander over to Keith's house or Keith would come over and Keith, Ringo never showed Zach really much drum stuff because Ringo's not that kind of player. He's like, well, I just play, you know, I just play time. I play for the song kind of a thing. And of course, and Keith is, you know, this whirling dervish of, of rhythm. And so Keith would show Zach a lot of stuff on the drums, and that's why Zach's playing sounds a lot like Keith's. Yeah. It's, it's very much stylistically the same. Yeah, because he kind of was taught by yeah by by Keith. And well, this is this is and this is a damn shame. I, but I did see that lineup. I saw the Who uh, when they came to Woodlands. It was a two thousand two thousand great great concert. And uh, but he never. By the time they finally got around to recording another record, uh, John had already died. So we have no album with Zach and John on it. Uh, but that just tells, shows you that Pete really didn't want it. <laughs> I mean, there was yeah. 20 years went by. They weren't doing anything. And uh, yeah, so that's, 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 that's well, why I say maybe... We were talking about drummers stopped. earlier, though, and I was mm -hmm. thinking what bands could not have... Uh, Vinnie Paul with Pantera. Yeah, no. Well, if, yeah, that, that was a... I mean, 
yeah, if, if Pantera back then had lost him, there was no there was nobody coming in to to do that. Yeah, and what, also what, what happened when Dimebag got killed though? Did they stop? Did they stop playing? Well, no, they they had already split up though. Oh, okay. It was, okay. It was Damage Plan at that. It was point. a different. Oh, Damage yeah. And Damage Plan right. was it, it, yeah, it was seriously it was like a Chuck E. Cheese uh, flavored yeah. band compared to Pantera. Everything it was, you know, there's this huge, massive step down from Pantera. But back in the day too, I mean, and even even Thin Lizzy, back in the day, I mean, if Brian Downey, yeah, you know, if anything happened to him, there's nobody coming in to take that spot. Right. There's people that could come in. Cozy Powell. I know Cozy Powell was gone too, but I mean, he was still of that ilk that could. He could have done that it. That could have. But there's still there's such a Ansley Dunbar th- maybe. There's such a uh, who's that? Ansley Dunbar. I know the name. I can't. Yeah, you know, you've you've heard him a hundred thousand times on all that British. And a lot of hard rock stuff okay. in the seventies and eighties. Um, uh, but 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 drummers like uh, and and even and I've I played it for you a couple of times at the the the, the live Saxon stuff. Nigel Glocker, yeah. from Saxon, he's ridiculous uh, and kind of unknown. Yeah, uh, I mean, and 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 the broader scheme of things, you know. Yeah, I yeah. mean, but right. just what a I mean, I, I, again, definitely overplays for a lot of people's taste, but. Music. I mean, he's a musical, just such a musical. Drum. So these, 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 uh, these drummers too. Because I, I it's, it, I'm, I'm a frustrated drummer in here, mm. uh, and I, I love, what, I love what when the drums are really musical. Like Phil Rudd is an incredible Phil Rudd. Of so I was just going to talk about that. Yeah, just meat and potatoes. But my God, don't. don't yeah, you think it's easy? Well, so it, it's, it's. I mean, ACDC has had years of success without having Phil Rudd in the band. Do I like it? No, I don't like Chris Slade's drumming. I don't like Simon Rice drumming. You know, when, when, when Vinny, when Vinny left Dio and, and Simon Rice started playing, I'm like, it's not the same. No. You know, it sounds like Dio singing and songs are okay, but you, you want that kind of thing. And when, and yeah, Chris Slade is an, is a great drummer. Yeah. Simon Wright is a great drummer, but they don't have, they don't push those. They, but that's not the same flavor. In same When you flavors. take Dave Lombardo out of Slayer, that's not the same, and I don't care Again, if he's Paul playing. Paul Bostaff is an amazing drummer. He's but a great drummer, but he's not, square, very square it's not, compared to it's Lombardo's. Methodical. Lombardo's got, yeah. He's melodic, and he's got those just, yeah. uh, I mean, even on their worst records, uh, God Hates Us All, and, and not even their worst, but it's just they're, they're much less than stuff like South of Heaven. But when I hear that stuff played by anybody but Lombardo, it's not the same Slayer record. It's not, well, I mean, I guess, I guess my point is is like, you can replace anybody. Anybody. But it's not going to be the same. No. You know, that's... Uh, no. Maybe, maybe. well, even Black Sabbath was different when that lineup changed. Yeah. But I think it improved. I mean, because for, for a couple of years, they were ascending, and then the last couple of years, it was really kind of rough. Yes. And, and Dio kind of came in and, and brought that back. But then Ozzy went on and had a great, really great solo career with a lot of great musicians. Yeah. And his band, too. So it's just... It's just Different, I guess, is what you do. Yeah. After. But then you have bands like, you know, you have bands like, here we go, like Leonard Skinner, and you have bands like, <laughs> like uh, Foreigner, and you have bands like Journey, and you have uh, Boston, and all these bands where there's maybe one guy left from the beginning. It's, it's, does it sound okay? I guess. Is it the same? Well, no, no. But I mean, it's yeah. all it, it, it's all a Walt Disney it's version like, of what used to be here we yeah, are doing yeah, our yeah, thing yeah. you know yeah and, yeah. and, and again we're we, we're falling prey to the our, we're 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 uh sunk right now but and, and we know how good it feels to get out there and be able to play after being shut in you know shut out whatever you know cut off so I understand how these bands want to get out and play their music, the music that they worked, and you know, yeah, they 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 except Queen. Queen's got to stay home. You can't. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't ever do that again. That was terrible. Just, just, just. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry that you wrote the, these anthems, these these historic anthems, these songs that will never, you know, arguably never be touched. Uh, but you can't take anybody else out on there on that. You can't. You can't yeah. tour on that. And with John Deacon staying home, you, you just have to call it a day. Well, to the to, to or get a karaoke machine and a microphone. To your point, I I, I see your point, and All here's right. my counterpoint: is that John Deacon apparently has is is he's involved 
kind of like what you know larry i guess maybe and you too like john's involved in the business side of things heavily sure is he oh yeah yeah oh. He's, he's still there he's still he's still kind of a member of the band he doesn't he don't want to play anymore he doesn't want to go on tour anymore but apparently he's a very much a a business like queen enterprises or queen inc whatever it's called he's like top of the food chain as far as that goes and he's given his blessings to the movie he's given his blessings to them going on tour apparently so brian and, okay, and roger did, does he know that i said don't did, well he will now okay well, he's good. once we send this to him all right he, 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 all right I, I think i think of of and i'm not a huge led zeppelin fan we've discussed we all discussed that in a previous show but, but you are now no no but i think it's what's, what's cool is, remember when you mentioned that they said okay we're done you know after when bonham died but uh you, you see that the the cool thing that happened after that you, both both uh page and Robert Plant went on to do some pretty interesting stuff yeah. after that, that yeah. they've done that if they've been trying to limp along, you know? Um, Cause I, I think about how freaking talented Brian May is. Why? I mean, maybe he has, and I just haven't heard about it. Maybe that's why he's doing queen again. Cause he's still, I don't know, but it, he seems like go, he should go collaborate with somebody new and do some new stuff. I mean, sure. why he's a great songwriter. Why squander that talent on just, you know? On Queen, yeah, fuck, <laughs> yeah. shitty I mean, man. Yeah, do, do, he's still around. He's still he's healthy. He's he's he looks like he's doing great. So why not do something new? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows yeah. what they do? What they do? Yeah. What band would you like to see die? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the tape just. <laughs> All right. Well, where are we here? I'm going to say the Chainsmokers. The Chainsmokers. That's a band? Yeah. See? Yeah. See, if, they, if they died today, no one would Nobody care. would notice. I have no idea who that yeah. is. Yeah, don't don't Google it. It's mm. rough. Yeah, a lot of, lot of bands. When, when, we toured the, <laughs> when we toured the country. A lot of bands need to die. <laughs> yeah, when we toured the country. There, was a, there, there, there is a lot. I mean, it's just anybody that steals music, uh, anybody, that, uh, anybody that purposely... You know, goes out hunting band members and other bands, uh, but but most of all, stealing music. Oh. That's that's yeah. that's to me is the that's that's mortal sin. That is a mortal sin of of uh, it's just you know it's just there's so much there's so much uh, uh, so much wonderful material and there's so many you know, just and and the, just the topic of the day. Just read the paper open up the front page I mean, if you're stuck but man you don't go out and steal somebody else's you know mm -hmm. you, you, you know and 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 even 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 uh guitar we were talking about space hog the other day and, and how they blatantly took bowie queen all this stuff i mean great stuff and and you know in a court of law i'm sure they could get it passed as their own but you know where it came from it's, yeah and, and that, that i'm not saying that that's stealing i said they, they did wonderful work and that's completely different. I'm talking about actually, you know, physically taking yeah, this yeah. song mm -hmm, and just yeah. changing this nut and bolt right here. And, you know, the, the song that always comes to mind was the Vanilla Ice. Was he, he thought he put that extra little beat in Queens under pressure, you know, and, and he thought, well, that's mine now, yeah. right? Cause and, and I was explaining to, to a friend of mine the other day was how, how if you record a public domain song as this band and another band takes that public domain song and rec records it the same way you, you know, that band did it. That's also theft. That's yeah, also, mm -hmm. you know, that's not it. it Cause the arrangement now is that's not a public domain the song mm -hmm. is do whatever you want with it. Sure. Just don't take the other. And, and, and I mean, how short sighted do you have to be? I, there's, there's not uh, speaking of queen and thin Lizzie and iron maiden and Pantera, all these just, ba I don't want to steal any of their songs. You know, do I wish I'd written some of them? Yeah, of course. No, and I'm not even talking about the money. I just want to play those songs, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, so that's mine. Yeah. yeah, they're the ones I should. So song stealers and the chain smokers, <laughs> all that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hopefully no chain smokers fans are gonna send us hate, send me hate mail. Yeah, I know nothing about them. You don't need to know anything about them. Okay, they're shitty. All right. Yeah. All right, enough said about that, I guess. So yeah, so we're 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 um we're going to look into uh we're going to look into uh an adult show. Um Yes. Uh yeah. I'm you're, an adult, you're more an or adult. less. Yeah. 
I mean, emotionally stunted, yes. but uh, other than that, I'm an adult. I'm yeah. a full-grown man. So we're going to look into that. So I want you to keep an eye on I want everybody to keep an eye on us because we're going to do an adult show here coming up pretty quick. And uh, we're also going to do, and we, we also want to say, I know all, I speak for all of us when I say, we want to thank Jeff Duncan for just yes. coming in and playing mm -hmm. a blinder every single time we've asked him. And we're going to have some new stuff with him coming up soon as well, because uh, just because. So <laughs> so we want you to uh, I, I, just just keep an eye out for that. And also keep sharing this and telling people about it because it's really been helping float the boat. And uh, yes, we've been thrilled to uh what in the hell is going on who's this guy the yard guy yeah oh, awesome. how's it going man hey man how you doing Talk, well, I'm talking about you want your grass cut uh not right now i got okay. it I, 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 maybe next week i will see okay all right i appreciate it man. thank you yeah, yeah you too all right there you go we had a guest yes. an yeah. unannounced guest yeah. show up he uh it's, it, it's a manscaping joke. It's an inside manscaping nice. joke. We, <laughs> we can't talk about it on there. But uh, uh, the yes, so we want to thank you all for 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 sticking with us and all this stuff. We got uh, really, really, really have, having a great time doing this stuff. And um, there was something else that we were going to say. Yes, and a, a bunch of this, a bunch of these dates have been cancelled. We know. We're we're hanging on tight to the dates that we still have, you know. We're and as they, as the dates get closer, we're, you know, we're we're watching them fall off the calendar. It's all nothing is nothing is in our hands in in that regard. We're we you know, if it comes if if it comes to the point where we can get out safely and you can be safe and we can be safe, you know, we're gonna go out and do the shows and we're gonna come out and see as as, as tour as quick as possible, mm. and um, but. Like like we say, just thank you for sticking with us, and uh, uh, you know, thank Did, thanks to Chad and Eric and Jeff for playing their asses off and getting. Uh, good, 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 there is going to be some good that comes of this, but we want to say we want to just again thank you for, and all we can't even mention you all by name. There's been so many, so many people have been so generous and so uh, just giving to us. Really, yeah, that means a lot. Thank you, lot. thank you very much. Yeah. Everybody who's been tipping us throughout the week and during the shows and joining us on Patreon, uh, very thank you very very much. Uh, if you want to if you want to join us there, it's patreoncom blackguards. and we put out exclusive stuff there every week. Uh, sometimes you'll get stuff early, uh, sometimes you get extended versions of this show, and uh, and also yeah. when the Scott that Scott the Quinn that said about the the recording thing, the the jam session, the rehearsal, the what, what Our rehearsal, it? you know, t maybe even uh, filming part of the rehearsal and stuff like that, because I, because I, yeah, yeah, uh, there, there's, yeah, we haven't, we haven't had many rehearsals. <laughs> yeah, we haven't. <laughs> there is some of that on there. There's a little bit of rehearsal footage if you dig back into the Patreon yeah. archives. So well, we have yeah, because I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to put some of this, the, yeah, the, the newer stuff, just even clips of it. Yeah, absolutely, to, be great. to put on there. So just yeah. something else to, to to look forward to because because we're stuck inside too. So yep. we're uh, maybe, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, so keep an eye on that. Join us there; it's going to be fun. And uh, we, like as Patrick mentioned, we'll be we're, we're thinking we've been thinking for a while about doing an adult show, which which means you know Patrick won't be revising the lyrics to make them kid friendly <laughs> as we go along. Hmm. So, and it probably will be instead of Sunday afternoon, it'll probably be in an evening. Yeah, uh, at some point. So, okay, we just have to figure out when and where that's going to be. You only need to know when. <laughs> so you leave the where to us not don't worry about it <laughs> so anyway cool uh i guess that's it is that a, is that yeah. a wrap yeah i guess so, anything yeah. else we need to touch on send some more questions in if you can well, yeah it's fun please yeah I, I was amazed at uh i don't have to ask any, anybody for questions anymore they just <laughs> they just show up at my doorstep as it were <laughs> right on but anyway thank you dalton and thank you john for those questions this week and uh and thank you Kay, for the coffee yes thank you thank you okay I think that I think that's it. We'll Gentlemen. see you all Cheers. soon. Don't go change. Wear a mask. Live. Wear a mask. Wash yes. Your hands. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.